Okay. Let me make sure that we are rolling here. Okay, Nick, just checking. Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. I see people starting to roll in. So it's 10 a.m. on the dot in here in the Pacific time zone. I'm going to wait 30 seconds and then we'll get going. Let me bring up our deck. Okay, as we wait for some people to come in, I just wanna remind everybody, if you haven't been here before, uh, we have the chat turned on, we have the Q&A turned on, we have three of us here to answer questions. We love to answer questions, we're here for a reason. We like the tough questions too. I don't think, I, don't, I think we've been like five or six of these where we didn't answer a question. Uh, I think we answered all of them and five or six in a row and wanna keep that streak going. So send us the toughest ones you can. We like to answer questions about security, about how we keep the AI secure, about anything you can think of. We like the, anything that makes Nick sweat, we really like those ones as well. So, um, or we have MJ, our head of GRC here as well. So if we can make her sweat and get her to answer some really tough questions, that's fun as well. So use the chat, we'll answer questions in the Q and A, we'll answer questions in the chat tool as well. Um, that makes this, that makes these a lot more fun. So welcome everybody, um, let's get it started. Um, my name is Michael Egerling. I lead marketing here at Trustero. I'm also joined by MJ Raber, who is our head of GRC at Trustero, and Nick Martin, who leads products here at Trustero. And we are doing, I think, our third progress report. So we started doing these back in the spring um, of this year, and we thought it would be a cool thing to just start opening up and showing everybody what we're up to. Uh, we think that we're up to some pretty cool stuff. Like we we are using AI to make GRC better, to make GRC faster, to make it more efficient and to do some things that we think are pretty interesting. And in the spirit of openness and, and just like getting good feedback, we wanted to just start showing those things off. So today we are, and really like in the last couple of these, we've been embracing this theme of agile GRC. It's something we started talking talking about over the last six months or so. And Nick is going to show some some technology and some features today that are really adjacent to that. Um, and so as we go forward, I want to remind everybody what it is that Trustero does and to put a little give a little bit of foundation for what we're going to get. That wasn't supposed to go backwards. A little bit of foundation for what we're going to talk about as we go forward. So what Tracera does is we enable agile GRC. And the way that we do that at a high level is we ingest data from a lot of different sources. And Nick is going to explain that a little bit later today. We ingest from GRC platforms. We ingest from uh, the applications that you use as an organization. We ingest from uh, evidence sources like documents and PDFs and um, and metadata and things like that. And then we analyze that data in real time. Um, and in a nutshell, that's highly, highly simplistic way to explain what we do. And then the big question that we're trying to answer as a company is once we have all of that data in our system, can we build an AI tool, an AI program that is three things? It is, well, two things. Is it accurate? And it is, is it useful enough to securely do some things? Can it make compliance decisions? Can it eliminate the most repetitive and costly GRC work? Can it make GRC teams more agile? And that's really a loaded word. And Nick's gonna explain the load behind that word later. It should even be capitalized in this deck. Can it make teams more agile? And can it make GRC teams, GRC teams more self-contained? Meaning, can those teams do more stuff that they couldn't do by themselves the year before? like where they had to hire a consultant or outside parties or things just took way longer the year before, can they do that stuff on their own now because they have this AI tool? So those are the four litmus tests that we are constantly measuring our progress against and, and really thinking about all the time. And all of those are leading to this idea that if we can achieve those four things using Trustero, then 
our customers and our users can focus on their highest value work. And one really quick anecdote, I think there, there's a, there's this idea around AI, and I think it's not a secret that like this this idea that is is AI going to enhance human work or is it going to take over human work? And there was a really interesting webinar that we did two or three weeks ago with one of our customers called Chassis. And I just thought it was a very cool conversation with their CISO and their CFO. And their point of view on that, I think is very, very interesting. And it's very much in the enhanced human work bucket. And it's, I think it's really worth going back and listening to uh, if you guys have some time, because it's just a really good look into how they think AI is changing the construct of how GRC teams work and how their team, how their GRC team works as well. And they are really focusing on their high value work now. And they're basically giving all of the repetitive questionnaires, internal audit stuff to their, to their AI. And with that, Nick, my yeah. preamble is over and go ahead. So Michael, I actually, I have a, uh, just a, a technical heads up for you. Uh, yeah. Apparently a few folks are having uh, trouble joining and then I'm also wondering if uh, if Q and A is enabled, if chat is enabled for the participants who have made it in. Um, so maybe a couple of things for you to look at uh, while after you uh, hand the baton off to me, which I believe is now complete. So I will uh, I will I will talk maybe while you work on sorting a few things out. Go ahead and start. I'll start tech support. I see Q and A. Okay, yeah, I'll start. Go ahead, Nick. Great. Yes. So good tee up, Michael. Thank you. Um, so yeah, why does any of this matter? Uh, a few things that we've heard uh, from talking to a bunch of people in this domain. Uh, GRC and customer trust roles uh, are tough and getting tougher. Um, and so what do we mean by that? What are, what are a few of the um, things that are contributing to that? Well, first one, uh, there's always some new framework uh, or additional complexity that's being added, right? So there's a growing list of those frameworks to add due to regular regulatory requirements or maybe revenue opportunities, right? You could sell to somebody if only you had fill in the blank framework. Um, uh, typically, uh, organizations already have a pretty big backlog of these things they're trying to get to. Um, uh, so it's not like they're sitting around twiddling their thumbs. Um, the work is time consuming. Um, and it's, it can be tricky to assess and manage, uh, that work and figure out, yeah, what, what is my best opportunity or what is the you know biggest risk that needs to be addressed? Um, a lot of times, uh, these teams are also cost centers. Um, and so they're not high on the list for additional investment, right? So I have to go and ask for budget. Uh, it can be difficult to come by. Even if you have the budget, it can also be difficult to find good people uh, to plug into the roles. Um, and then getting the right level of buy-in from stakeholders and partners that don't understand GRC and find it difficult to be, you know, responsive. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times the, you know, the organization just wants to know it's, it's being done. They want to know it's taken care of. Um, but beyond that, you know, they, they may not have the bandwidth to engage more fully. Um, and, and so there may be some, some uh, difficulty getting the engagement. And then the final one I'll put on the list here is decentralized intelligence. Uh, it can be difficult to get answers from SMEs. So, um, so GRC teams and um, customer trust teams, you know, those teams that are helping, um, uh, helping with, with sales and doing things like answering security questionnaires, the people who actually know the answers to those questions may be distributed throughout the organization. Um, and so how do you how do you get that information and how do you um, how do you make use of it? That can be a challenge. All right. Next slide, please, Michael. All right. So then uh, maturity levels. Um, uh, as we're talking to organizations, you know, we talk to people who are in various states. Uh, this one is is not uncommon, unfortunately, understaffed and overwhelmed, right? So uh, risk and compliance may not be fully managed. Uh, there may be reactions that need to, uh, uh, you know, ideally would take place quickly, but it can take months actually to react to things that are happening. It's a high stress environment, you know, prioritizing via emergencies, diving catches, that sort of thing. Uh, visibility is low. Uh, so executives have no idea what's going on most of the time. 
Um, and then there can be uh, uh, gaps in reports that may lead to regulatory issues, right? So um, when you're in this kind of high stress, prioritized by emergency environment, um, that, that's the that's that can be where um, compliance issues happen, and then that can have real uh, impacts on security um, or you know regulatory authorities. All right, next one. Okay, uh, then the 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 next kind of kind of place that people can get to is what we call adequately staffed traditional. So um, you know things are still probably reactively managed. Um, the reactions are faster. It's not totally stressful. Um, the visibility is okay, um, but may not be as good as what executives would like. Um, so there still are occasional surprises. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the reports are clean. You're not getting dinged on regulatory issues. So it's like, it's contained. It's it's all right, um, but it but it still is is probably more stress than the GRC people would really like. Okay, which brings us to the last one, uh, Agile GRC. So this is not a concept we came up with, um, and we've got a, 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 a some more info on this in a little bit, but um, this kind of borrows from uh, um, the Agile Manifesto and lessons learned in Agile software development, and it brings a similar sort of mindset to GRC. Um, and the challenge has been, though, getting the automation to enable operating this way it can be very challenging, especially if you don't have AI powered tools like what Tristero has. Um, but we've seen organizations actually get to this place where risk and compliance is proactively managed. Um, issues are addressed in hours or days instead of weeks or months, much lower stress, much higher visibility. So there aren't you know, big regulatory or compliance uh, um, surprises that are, uh, you know, creating emergencies for people and then clean reports, no, no issues. Uh, so that's the, that's the place we want everybody, uh, to get to, and we think is quite, quite possible. All right. So a little bit on how we do this. Um, so Michael talked about, you know, um, uh, we ingest data and then provide analysis. And uh, this this kind of uh, explains how that works. So you have data in on the left, analysis out on the right, and then you got Trustero and our AI in the middle. And I won't read I won't read every last detail of this to you, but I'll kind of do a, a tour through the bubbles um, where starting at the top left. Um, GRC platforms, uh, we can actually ingest from other systems. We know that it is painful to switch platforms. So we said, yeah, uh, you know, of course, if somebody wants to use our full GRC platform, that's great. But the kind of insights we can provide, um, our system actually doesn't really care where the, the raw data comes from. We can we can still provide the insights. So we said, yeah, let's, let's make it easy for people to adopt uh, our solution and just pull the data out of other platforms and then analyze it. Um, so, so that's our approach with GRC platforms. Um, and we're, we're actively building these out right now. Uh, so um, chances are, if we don't have the one you're using today, it's on our list and you know we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, uh, the next bucket are what we call receptors. Receptors are integrations for evidence collection. They gather evidence or they gather data uh, refine it into evidence, um, actually you utilize AI to figure out where that evidence needs to go. So where it's most useful, it does, uh, most of that itself, uh, very well. Of course, that's all, um, can be configured. So if you don't like the place that it's selected by default to, you know, to send some evidence, you can change all that yourself. Um, and uh, similar to the GRC platforms, you know, we've got a pretty good list of these and it's just growing all the time. So we can pull data in from, you know, your biggest categories of places where your evidence resides, like cloud platforms, um, uh, uh, HRIS systems, source code management systems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Okay, and then uh, we also have integrations to document management and collaboration systems. So we know, you know, so, uh, certain organizations they have their the system of record for their policies, for example, that might be in a Google a Google Drive. Um, so we can actually uh, uh, link to those policies and pull in the data from Google Drive natively. Um, and then finally, kind of the the all purpose escape hatch. We know there's lots of documents 
uh, uh, free, free kind of free form documents out there. Not everything is beautifully structured and managed. And luckily our system was built from the ground up to handle that. So we can take in um, documents, spreadsheets, images, PDFs, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and our AI can make use of that. And so we're not constrained to the narrow um, set of things that can be um, uh, cr uh, collected with automation. We can, we can look at everything. So if you got a messy spreadsheet or a, a Word doc, that is totally fine uh, for our system. Uh, and then the analysis coming out, uh, we've got kind of three big buckets control assurance, and I'll be showing you some more details about this in a minute, but that's, um, you know, we kind of help sort out for you the, the order that you should go about um, uh, checking things off on your list. We help you examine and test. We help give you guidance on how to operationalize controls. And then if there are gaps, how to remediate those gaps. Um, uh, uh, our question, uh, our Q&A feature, you can ask actually totally open-ended questions. Um, you can also ask, um, or you can also throw questionnaires at it. And so kind of two big use cases there are help you understand what's going on in your organization. And then also, you know, helping with the scenario where you're trying to sell to somebody, you give them your SOC 2 or your ISO and they say, thank you very much. Please answer the, these additional 500 questions. So that's why we built that feature. Uh, and, and so it helps with that. And then the final one is around risk assurance. Uh, so helping make sure that um, uh, you're doing all your risk management activities and giving you a boost with AI. Uh, in particular, we've got a, a, a tool that will um, analyze the SOC 2 report for you and give you the most important uh, parts of that uh, as part of your uh, vendor management program. Okay, that's data in, data out. Uh, there's a ton of use cases we support. Um, we're going to be talking about three of these today. So I'll, I'll kind of just give you the overview of the slide here where we've got a use case, kind of a before, which is, you know, what is the, what is the, you know, fairly typical status quo. And then, uh, and then the next column that agile with accurate AI, there's, there's the, the feature that our system provides uh, and like how uh, the, the things that we can do there. And then the final thing is a, is a rough estimate on the number of hours uh, saved uh, for somebody who's going through, through um, an effort to, uh, uh, you know, do these things. What would it typically take to do? And then how much time does our, um, does our system and our AI save you as part of that? So today we're gonna to be looking at, at three of them. Uh, framework project tracking, so kind of like how your progress is going uh, um, on uh, a compliance effort. Uh, questions and questionnaires, and then examination and testing. Uh, so uh, are, you know, are your controls designed well? Uh, are they implemented? Are they operating well? That kind of thing. Uh, so that's what we're gonna show uh, in a demo. And we're going to send this deck out after. So, I mean, we're not going to talk too much about any of this other stuff, but it is worth mentioning. We're going to show, there's some slides that explain a bunch of this other stuff as well. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, okay. Nick, it's, uh, I'm going to give you the screen. Great. I will get the right thing up here. And... Okay, uh, so you all are looking here at a, a demo Trustero account. Uh, and this is set up like a typical um, software as a service company that's going after SOC 2. Um, and what you're looking at here is an organization that's in an audit ready state. So they've done a bunch of work to, um, you know, to operationalize, you know, so starting from scratch, They've operationalized their controls, they've put everything in place, and now they're at the happy place where everything's working and we're gonna keep them working. Um, so I'll, I'll talk first actually about the compliance roadmap. Um, so this is, a, this is a feature that actually introduces all of the steps that you'll need to go through, but in order. Um, and you can hop around and do these things um, because we know it's not a perfectly linear, linear journey um, but it, you know, it starts with the basics, like, you know, do you have a framework selected? Is the audit set up? Are there some, 
Um, have you indicated which third party services you use, that kind of thing. And then we we step you through kind of more and more complicated things. So you you start with the scoping, you prepare some content. Now you're operationalizing, so you're starting to walk the walk. And then at the end, uh, are the controls actually working? And um, a big part of this is we actually assess that using AI. And so this is an example here in the compliance roadmap of, okay, great, all the controls passed. And it'll actually give you a detailed readout of uh, how it came to the conclusion about the, the controls actually working. Um, and so I can pop open one of these and see, aha, okay, here's all the, here's all the information that it's provided. Um, so that's a, a, a really quick thumbnail sketch of how we kind of help you through that. Um, and I think probably most people then are wondering, well, how, how does it actually come to its conclusion? So I can um, uh, move on to our next bit that I'm going to demo, um, which is around that uh, examine and test phase. And so per control, um, we can actually look at a control look at its design, um, and then look at the the, uh, the control tests to see if things are actually um, working as intended. So I'll give you a little tour first of, um, of this example control. So this is a pretty typical data backup and disaster recovery control. And as you can see, you know the objective here is that you're backing up your stuff and you practice recovering from that on a regular basis. Because uh, as we all know, it's no, it's no good to allegedly back things up and then discover later when you actually need the backups that you try to restore and you actually can't restore. So this control is about making sure you can recover from a disaster if it were to occur and you've got everything uh, working well. Um, and as part of um, uh, uh, understanding kind of how we, how we evaluate things, um, we have what we call required evidence so this is just a bulleted list of the things that that somebody would need to collect in order to to um, prove out that the control is working, and then there are corresponding test procedures. and And for this uh, demo, we're going to focus in on uh, one piece of evidence, which is documentation of the most recent annual test of the data backup and restore procedures. So you want to gather that, and then um, in terms of the test procedure. We're going to want to validate that the data backup and restore procedures are tested at least annually and meet the recovery time of uh, objectives specified. Um, and I'll um, also mention that this control comes from our uh, curated content set that we make available, but our system can work with absolutely anybody's uh, control set. Um, and our system actually doesn't know who authored it, where it came from, that sort of thing is completely agnostic. And um, and all of these things are editable um, uh, and, and they can be kind of edited in place or um, uh, we also have bulk upload uh, uh, features. So some of our, our clients choose to use our curated content set, others will actually bring their own and it's a matter of just uploading it to our system, which is, straight, which is very straightforward to do. Um, and, and our customer success team helps people, helps people do that. Um, in terms of the test procedures, these look, these look very similar uh, and are, are in fact like written the same way that an auditor uh, would write test procedures. Um, so it's modeled on that. Um, these also can be edited as well. Um, and then we we also have some you know helpful guidance that's available uh, kind of on what makes a good test or not. So with those things in place, um, then let me let me take you through then the actual uh, piece of evidence that would show this. And that's our uh, um, uh, this PDF here. So I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we can take in automated evidence uh, from a variety of sources, but we also work with the very, uh, you know, you know, messier real world kind of evidence that folks encounter out there. And um, and so uh, what we've done for this particular control is we've actually attached uh, that real world evidence. So you'll see PDFs and images and spreadsheets. So this annual data backup and restore test, if I open this thing up, uh, we'll see that, hey, this is just a regular old PDF, nothing special about this. Um, and, and then if we kind of scroll through it, we can see 
all right, does this do, uh, is this the piece of evidence that we want? And does it cover the things that, that the test said it should? And indeed we see, yep, this is an annual data backup and restore test. This is from the last year, right? So this happened December 13th of 23. We see who participated. Um, we see the RTOs and we see the, the work that was done. Um, and so this is very, very typical kind of document that would be produced as a result of a test like this. No, nothing special was done with respect to the formatting or anything like that, just a regular old PDF. And so uh, in, my, uh, in my opinion, looks pretty good. Uh, so let's see what the AI uh, had to say about that thing. Um, so we'll, um, we'll jump to here, uh, to these two AI checks that we conduct. So all of our AI checks, the way that it works is we give you a up or down kind of pass fail sort of answer. And then in addition, we'll also um, give you details about why it came to the conclusion. So it's not you know, like the AI has spoken. That's definitely not our attitude. It's more, here's how it came to the conclusion. Here's the conclusion it has and, and why. Um, so the first check we'll start with is this completeness check. This is um, just making sure that all the things that were listed in that um, required evidence field actually appear to be a, a, a attached to the control. Uh, and that's exactly what uh, is happening here. Um, uh, so what it's what it's done is it's looked at that list and it's come to the conclusion that yes, indeed, all of the evidence is, that is needed is here. And then it'll give you a, sort of an assessment about how it came to that conclusion. And you'll see here, it says annual data backup and restore test, which likely documents the most recent annual test of data backup and restore procedures. And the reason it says likely here is, is this check is, is relatively high level. It's really just looking at the file type and file name and saying, does this, does this match? And it's saying, yeah, that, that seems pretty good. Um, which brings us then to the next uh, check that we do. We call this spot check. And it is actually doing the much more thorough examination. Um, and so uh, you'll see here that all the tests pass. And if we look at, again, the, the detailed test that we had uh, for, for that piece of evidence we looked at, um, it, it says the annual data backup and restore test, along with supporting documents like the disaster recovery plan, which is also attached, uh, confirms that backup and restore procedures are tested annually and meet the specified RTOs satisfying this test. Um, so that's that's completeness and spot check and, and demonstrating um, uh, you know implementation and, and operating effectiveness of the of the control. Um, I'll also then I skipped over one here. Um, we also do a bit of uh, design assessing as well for the controls. Um, and so one of the things, one of the AI power checks we do here is what we call control matches policy. And this is making sure that the text of the uh, uh, control objective um, doesn't have any material differences compared to its, um, its related policy. So, so I'll show you the policy document here in a, in a moment, but you can see you know, it says it explicitly states this stuff. Uh, this is outlined in the section titled information backup, or it mentions that backup copies must be maintained and regularly tested. Um, and if we crack open the policy, which is linked here, so we have a business continuity policy, we open this thing up, we'll see that, okay, again, we've got a PDF, and inside of this guy, um, we can see that um, uh, inside of here, you can see that there is a section, uh, so data backup and disaster recovery section. And then in here, we can see information backup. And it says, backup copies of information, software, and systems must be maintained, regularly tested, et cetera. So indeed, that assessment uh, is, is based on the text that's actually here again, in this very ordinary PDF. Uh, okay, so that is, um, so I've shown now the um, uh, the details of a control operating effectively. Now I'll actually pop back up and talk a little bit about Agile GRC. And so the, the 
the really transformative thing that we've seen is if you've got a foundation of, okay, I know the steps that I need to accomplish. You get your controls operating effectively. You're regularly, you get them to pass. Then, then kind of the next step is, okay, I've done it once or I've done it twice. Now let's, let's actually look at this thing every single day. Um, and that's what this part of the dashboard shows off is um, the ability to not just run the AI checks occasionally, but um, if you're ready for it, and, and, and typically what happens is, again, sort of a maturation process, and there comes a time where, yeah, everything is humming here. Let's check it every day. And somebody can actually opt in to polling evidence and scanning um, uh, and, and, you know, doing a examination and test uh, every day if they want to. And so this dashboard is then the roll up of that. You see the the results at the highest level here and um, can see see the results of these checks. OK, uh, that is control assurance. And I think, Michael, I'm moving on to uh, Q&A. Is that is that right? That's right. Yep. Great. So another um, issue, you know, I mentioned that dynamic before where customer uh, or a, a client of ours may, you know, uh, present to someone they're trying to sell to, okay, here's our SOC 2 report or, our, um, you know, our PCI, um, uh, you know, our PCI or our ISO, et cetera. And then the buyer immediately says, okay, that's fine. Here's 500 more questions to answer. So we built this capability in order to, to assist with that dynamic. Um, and, and so we support the ability to answer, um, you know, multi-hundred questionnaires. Um, you just have to upload them to the platform. It's really easy. So you come in here um, and you can upload a spreadsheet in uh, CSV form. We also make it possible if you want to just do it here in the UI, you just do it, do kind of a one-off. Uh, you can do it that way as well. And uh, and then it'll start cranking on on those questions and answering them. And um, the 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 source for these answers um, uh, is, a, is a couple of things. So number one, we have um, support for a knowledge base. So many organizations that have had to you know, start answering question questionnaires at a pretty good clip. What they end up doing is they uh, collect the previous questions and answers and keep them around uh, somewhere, typically like in a spreadsheet. So you actually can take that existing knowledge base and upload it to our system. And then that will be the the basis for uh, for answering future questions. So our AI, what it'll do is if the, the essential fact is contained in that knowledge base, it says, okay, great. I, I have the information I need to actually answer the next question. Um, so that that's pretty helpful and and it and it's very smart in how it answers it. So it's not based on you know command F through through things. It it actually can be worded completely differently as long as the so so it's not relying on like keyword matching or anything like that. Um, as long as the meaning is is contained in the previous question and answer, it'll answer novel new questions. Um, and then then we also said, well well wait a minute, we've got this capability to do, um, you know, to do control tests. Um, and we have a ton of the facts that are needed to answer um, uh, questions. What if instead of somebody giving us uh, a knowledge base, wouldn't it be nice for us to just be able to answer questions based on the facts that are already in the system? Um, and then on top of that, uh, we had customers who said, you know what, this thing's actually useful, not just for answer answering questionnaires, but it actually helps me answer kind of one-off questions that I need in order to do to do my job. So kind of calling back to that um, business continuity control, that uh, backup and disaster recovery test, um, uh, we... Uh, uh, we heard about scenarios where, especially in, in larger organizations, where it actually can be challenging to answer a question like this. When was the most recent data backup and restore test conducted? Who participated and did it meet the RTOs? Um, well, all these facts are contained in our system, but the person who owns that control 
maybe far apart or far away from the person who who wants to ask this question. And they could they could track that person down and ask them and it might take a little while to find them. Or they could just come into a system like this and ask the question and get an answer in 44 seconds. Um, and so you'll see here, ask that question, we get a very familiar looking answer. All of this information is actually coming straight out of the evidence that was attached to that disaster uh, recovery control. So this is a this is a pretty powerful capability. Um, and in fact, in the the webinar that uh, Michael was referencing before with with Chassis, they asked actually uh, asked their internal auditor to ask our system questions before talking to them. And that actually saved a ton of time and made the auditor's life better as well as chassis life better because um, they could just ask this system and got, get the answer they need and and move on. So I yeah, think he said it saved him. Uh, said he did, did his audit about uh, the CFO said he did the process about a hundred times faster than the year before. Mm -hmm. I want I wanted to mention Nick that like uh, uh, that I was um, we were at a conference last week at the risk conference in London. Shout out to the risk conference in London, and I had a bunch of conversations about this this very thing. And then people would come up and they would start asking us about the questionnaire tool and we would explain explain the you know how it worked and they said well that doesn't sound all that interesting i mean there's there's 15 companies here that do that very thing and i said yeah that's right i mean if you just hand all the answers to chat gpt i mean it's going to give you the correct answer almost 100 percent of the time and that's why we give we give that part away for free so we the knowledge-based version of our product we do in fact give away for free and you should go sign up today at trustero.com create account um, and you will get a thousand questions for free because it's not that hard to do. What Nick is showing is kind of what we are really proud of. And it's this ability to answer these complex questions with the facts that are in Trustero. And you can see like it does take longer for QC Advance to go in and build these complex answers from facts that are in the GRC platform. But this is this is actually what's what's special about about this system. So I want to uh shout that out. I will I will stick up for our knowledge base product a little bit in yeah it's great it is very good it's we actually do a couple of things in there that are kind of subtle uh, over like a DIY setup so one thing that we do is we take great pains to avoid the dreaded hallucination so um, uh, uh, some LLM back systems will very confidently and incorrectly answer questions with made up uh, made up answers. So that can actually be that one of the hardest things actually to handle is a knowledge based back system that will confidently say, I don't know. So that's one thing that our RKB back system will do that's actually uh, quite, quite different. But then you're, you're absolutely right. Then what we call QC advance, the one that relies on the platform data, it's even better because you don't, you don't need a knowledge base at all. You don't need to seed it. It's just you use the platform, your everyday use of the platform enables you to answer questions. So, okay, I think I'm done with my demo. Okay, I'll take the screen back from you and we'll start wrapping up. So a couple more things to talk about um, here and then we're gonna wrap. So just closing, we wanted to, to, to kind of probably ask the question that is, that is probably on everybody's mind here. So um, is, any, is this really working? It, it's, it's all out there, but is anybody really saving you time or money? Um, we're just going to reference this these guys one more time. Go back and watch this video if you're curious about that. It's uh, it's all on YouTube. It's only 30 minutes long. Um, it's also in podcast form, so you can listen to it. This is just a really good, I think this is a really good um, A-B test, really, because these guys did their ISO 27001 without AI in 2023, and then they did the exact same process with Trustero AI in 2024, and they had the CFO and their CISO on the line with us to explain the difference. And so there's some quotes on the screen there, but probably the most uh, impactful one for me is the last one where the CISO mentioned that they were able to do it with peace of mind and less stress. They were able to walk into meetings with, you know, really with much less prep than they had the year before and be able to relax. And so that's really what we're trying to get to. Um, is, or that end state when you peel back the onion is that people can relax walking into these meetings because they feel secure and informed um, by the by the work they've done with Tristero and with the AI. So last last slide, Nick, I'll pass it over to you to talk a little bit about how we deploy our software and then I'll close up 
the presentation. Yeah, great. So um, we covered this a little bit on that on the slide that you know showed how the data flowed flowed through our system. Um, but uh, uh, I think it's absolutely worth um, just emphasizing for everybody. You know, we're we're very happy to be you know the, the primary GRC platform, but we understand you know people have choices and uh, people made decisions a long time ago and ripping out the old thing to move to the new thing can be extremely painful and just slow stuff down. So we said, hey, what if we could just give people all the value of Trustero without having them needing to rip everything out? Uh, and so that's where we came up with the, you know, the complementary approach. Um, and so if, you're, if your big pain points are around analysis and, you know, Agile GRC and trying to stay on top of everything, um, that's where we excel and we can really help. Um, and, uh, um, it, uh, and, and then this term in terms of the primary one, if, you know, if you don't have a platform yet, you do everything in a, a spreadsheet that we, we make it very easy to get up and moving, uh, in trust arrow as well. So we're all about kind of time, time to value and trying to shrink that as much as possible. So you can sign up with us and, um, start getting the benefits as soon as possible, regardless of how, how you choose to deploy. And with that in mind, just tan tangenting into this last slide. So if you're interested in talking to us about Trustero, either as your primary GRC platform or as adding any of our AI co-pilots like questionnaire, like report summarization, or, or some of the control effectiveness testing that Nick was showing us earlier, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you so much that uh, if you want to spend a little bit of time with you, we want to send you this funny mug. We gave a bunch of these away in London last week. People were people were kind of tripping over themselves to win win some of these from us because they're just the goofiest thing. We I don't expect that anybody would ever buy one of these from themselves. That's why we like to give them away. They'll keep your coffee hot for hours, so you can drink six old six hour old coffee that's nice and hot. Um, so scan that QR code book some time with us and we'll send you one of these right after your demo. And like I said earlier, um, if you wanna go and start with Questionnaire Copilot for free, uh, the QR code that's on the screen there will get you started. You'll have 500 credits in your account as soon as you log in. Shortly after that, we'll double the credits to 1,000. So your first thousand questions will be answered for free there. If you have any you know, questions as you get started, you're going to get an email um, from the Trustero team right after you start. Just hit us up if you have any questions about how to use the system, um, and we'll get right back to you. I did just did just see a question come in. It says, uh, "Is there a limit to the input size of the document uploaded and limit to the responses?" I think we're probably talking about the Q and A. Um, so. Limit to the size of the document, not that I'm aware of. Um, there are some limits when it comes to um, the control tests. Um, so, and I'll, I'll kind of characterize this. So, so if you're talking about control tests, we do have a system where by default, we look at as much data as we can, and then we back off and we'll sample if the, if the data is too large. That typically is not a problem with written documents. So you can have like very large written documents because the way our system works is we will basically look through them for the relevant pieces of information. Where it can become a, a challenge is if you have you know multi thousand row records that we are that we're testing, and in that case we'll sample, which is which is what auditors do anyway when they're evaluating effectiveness. So we're we kind of our mindset is we want to be just as at least as thorough as an auditor would be. Um, and then in terms of answering questions, um, uh, the, the responses tend to be pretty concise um, uh, because th that's usually the way the questions are, are written, but, but maybe there's a particular uh, use case um, that, uh, that it looks like Rich has in mind. So Rich, you know, we'd be happy to talk to you more about the subtleties there, um, if if you'd like to go deeper. But that's the that's my kind of um, you know high level answer. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to talk about that, Rich, our emails our emails are both on the screen. You can email either one of us. Um, I know our I know our uh, VP of Sales and Ops is going to uh, run a five hundred fifty questionnaire uh, 
question questionnaire today. And so we're all we're all looking forward to seeing how many how many questions get answered accurately from that. I know I ran a 70, no, a 60 question AWS foundational tech review last week. And I got out of the 55 architectural questions that got asked, 49 were accurate. And then MJ had to step in and help me with a couple additions. So I mean, it would save me save me a ton of time. That was a relatively lightweight one, but yeah, no no issues there with the size of it. Um, okay, that's it. We have about we're right on time at ten forty five. Want to thank uh, my team for for coming and joining today as always and providing such you know great content. And thanks everybody for joining. Um, like I said, our emails are on the screen. Our QR cards codes are on the screen. I'll leave those up for a minute while everybody exits. Thanks for joining us. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody at the next one. Have a great Thursday. Bye-bye.